The state of Iowa affirmed the right to keep and bear arms in their state constitution. That's great news, but let's talk about some of the potential issues with what happened out there and why it matters to our Second Amendment rights in Iowa. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you have not subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do show and show your love for the right to keep and to bear arms in the United States. All right, folks, so a lot of election news. We're going to talk specifically about a referendum in Iowa today, specifically Iowa voters... Iowa voters approved a constitutional amendment to their state constitution, their state constitution, the Iowa constitution, uh, that enshrined the right to keep and bear arms in their state constitution, which is extremely good news for the following reason. Because states have the authority to expand state rights beyond what the federal government says, specifically beyond what the federal government Bill of Rights is. So for example, you are allowed to extend constitutional rights beyond the rights found in the Constitution as a general matter. And we sometimes see this in constitutional cases. We often talk about the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms, which is the federal constitutional right recognized in the pre-existing right to keep and bear arms. But remember, every state has a constitution, and most states, not all states, but most states recognize an individual right to keep and bear arms in addition to the federal constitution. So for example, in the state of Vermont, since the early 20th century, literally like 1903 or something, uh, the Vermont Supreme Court in interpreting the Vermont constitution says that there's no license to requirement to carry or anything else. So in Vermont, literally since the beginning of time, you can carry a gun uh, open or concealed without a permit at all. There's not even a permitting system in a place like Vermont. And that was brought to Vermonters originally by the Vermont State Supreme Court interpreting the Vermont Constitution and not the federal one. Just to illustrate how state constitutions can be very important. So in Iowa, they enacted the following constitutional amendment. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of this in one second. But here's what the Iowa Constitution says. Uh, now that they've just amended it, this is what the voters voted on, and I'm glad they did. Glad they did. Here's what the text says, though. The right to keep and bear arms, section 1A. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Good. The sovereign state of Iowa affirms and recognizes this right to be a fundamental individual right. Very good. Now, here's where Iowa mm, maybe did not nail this. Here's the last part of it. Any and all restrictions of this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny. Last sentence of this amendment. Any and all restrictions of this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny. Now, that's just been enshrined in the Iowa Constitution based on this referendum vote. Now, we've talked about on this channel. Now, I have never talked to anybody in Iowa about this topic. I read this before. I didn't say anything about it. And now I'm saying something about it. Okay. I don't know who drafted this Iowa Constitutional Amendment. And I'm glad that they are trying to enshrine the right to keep and bear arms in the state constitution. I'm glad about that. But this decision to add the language, any and all restrictions of this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny, I'm not sure where that language came from. It must have come from some lawyers or someone that wanted to be smart, and I applaud the effort. But you know from this channel that whenever, remember this, you must remember this, whenever you talk about the phrase, Tiers of scrutiny in constitutional law, whether it be strict scrutiny, whether it be intermediate scrutiny, whether it be rational basis, it doesn't matter. It is extremely, extremely bad for the right to keep and bear arms because tiers of scrutiny is a euphemism for balancing away rights, individual fundamental enumerated rights, balancing away our rights at the, you know, because of some arguably compelling state interest. So when the Iowa, uh, the, the, the Iowa voters voted this in, I'm sure the Iowa voters didn't draft this, but when the language says any and all restrictions of this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny, bing, 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 hello, we on this channel know that when you hear the word strict scrutiny or anything involving tiers of scrutiny or scrutiny, it is bad for gun rights. Bad, bad, 
Okay, don't kid yourself because again, it is basically allowing judges who work for the government, right? Government judges to preside over cases involving the scope of the right to keep and bear arms. And you are basically saying that the judge has an obligation to balance the importance of the individual right to keep and bear arms on the one hand against the governmental interests supposedly protected by the gun control law like a so-called assault weapon ban, which is a semi-automatic rifle ban, right? You are giving the government the authority to balance our rights away in the name of some public interest. This is why the United States Supreme Court says, do not do this. In Heller, they says, you cannot do this. That, that the Second Amendment has already been subject to balancing of interest between public policy, public interest, social benefits, individual rights, when the founding fathers wrote and ratified the Second Amendment itself. The balancing of interests already took place when they wrote the Bill of Rights and adopted it. That is the balance of interest. Judges today in the 21st century don't get another crack at this government legislatures, government presidents, right? Government, you know, governors. They don't have the authority or the right to go out there and rebalance away the Second Amendment because that was already done. It's in the text of the Second Amendment. It must be respected. But when you put in this Iowa Constitution a reference to any and all restrictions of this right, they're contemplating restrictions of this right. Any and all restrictions of this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny, which is basically saying that under the Iowa Constitution, any gun control law out there will be balanced. The benefits of that gun control law will be balanced on the one hand against the rights of people in Iowa to carry, to keep and bear guns on the other hand. You are playing into the left's hands. Now, again, I don't know the context of Iowa. I don't know the politics of Iowa. I don't know anyone in Iowa in that sense. I don't know who drafted this. I don't know anything about this. And I'm sure... I'm very sympathetic and on their side because anyone that wants to preserve the right to keep and bear arms in the state constitution, I'm generally a thousand percent on their team. So I'm guessing I'm a thousand percent on their team and I would like them and I would cheer for them. But that last sentence, if it were me in Iowa, I would immediately start asking myself, should we modify that in the next referendum? I don't know how that works in Iowa, no idea, but I would ask myself, why did we put this in there? Now, I suspect I know why they put that strict scrutiny here. Someone said this is the right idea, this is the right plan, but in my opinion, mm, nah, you don't want that. The standard of review for gun control laws is what the U.S. Supreme Court has said, going back to Heller in 2008, McDonald in 2010, even Caetano in 2016, and certainly Bruin. In June of 2022, the right standard is to interpret the Second Amendment and all of the Bill of Rights, but specifically the Second Amendment. There's some other Bill of Rights there with some legacy laws associated with the liberal Warren Court and like not. We don't need to get into those other amendments now. We can, but we don't need to right now. But when it comes to the Second Amendment, tears of scrutiny is not the way to interpret it. It's text, history, confirmatory traditions. Again, text, history, confirmatory traditions. That's it. That's the proper legal standard. When you use anything involving strict scrutiny or scrutiny or tears of scrutiny, eh, bad idea in my opinion. It's allowing the government to balance away our rights. And we never, ever, ever want to let judges have the opportunity to balance away our rights when it comes to the right to keep and bear arms. That is bad. And anyone who says otherwise, in my opinion, has got it dead wrong. And I do know there's some scholars out there and people say, oh, strict scrutiny. I think they're naive. I think they get it wrong. I don't think they understand the rallies of what tiers of scrutiny is because what tiers of scrutiny really means in practice, in my experience, is they basically just pay lip service to the right to keep and bear arms. They pay lip, they, they talk about the compelling state interest. And basically whenever you're talking about preventing violent crimes from occurring, that is defi by definition a compelling state interest. So the government is very easy to meet the standard. They always underweight the right to keep and bear arms against the compelling state interest to stop quote unquote gun violence. It's very easy for the government to meet because it just sounds intuitive that a compelling state interest is stopping criminal violence in all forms, including with guns across America. So yeah, this is a terrible standard in my opinion. It's certainly better than other standards like intermediate scrutiny and rational basis 100%, but in practice, practice any kind of scrutiny, including strict scrutiny, will come back and, 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 and boomerang on the gun rights movement, in my opinion. And again, I applaud the people in Iowa. I'm not beating up the people in Iowa. I'm not people beating up the people that, that supported this law in Iowa or anything like that. I am making an observation. In my opinion, they may want to take another look at this moving forward and fix up this resolution, fix up this amendment to the Constitution. The next chance they get, it's just word of the wise. Again, uh, I'm not in Iowa. I'm not an Iowan. So, uh, you know, whatever they do, they do. But that's just kind of my thinking 
uh, behind this. But the good news is I'm glad overall Iowa enacted this. This is great news. Anytime another state enshrines the right to keep and bear arms and shows that show they love it. Awesome. Great news. But again, as a technical matter, I might have recommended some different language if I was drafting this, but that's just me. Okay. Hope you learned a little bit something here today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you again soon here at the four boxes. Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.